Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. It's an all pundit show with Mike Bosma, Matt Robinson, and Bob Lucy. It's all coming up next on all new Nevada Newsmakers. All systems check. All right, Sam, let's go check out some D&D roof. Hey, Ken. From up here, you can really tell the difference a quality D&D roof makes. You're right, Sam. With our experience, knowledge, and staff, nothing compares to a D&D roof. Hey, look down there. It's our D&D roofing crew. I'll bank the plane and we'll get a closer look. Sam! You watch your company's bottom line, and I'll cover the top of it. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we have an all pundit show for you today. A great lineup here. Mike Bosma returns, principal with Clifton Larson Allen CPAs, Matt Robinson. His premier visit here. Uh, he is with Argentum Partners, and Bob Lucy is the vice chairman of the Washoe County Commission. Pleasure to have you all here. Thank you. Thank so you. let me start with you, Bob, and uh, let's talk about you know because we had a lot of Democrats visiting the state over this past weekend yeah. for the AFSCME uh, uh, meeting uh, down in Las Vegas. Um, what are your thoughts on where we are with the, the Democrats at this point in time? Uh, you know, I, I think that it's it's unbelievable to see how large the field is. I mean, in what we're seeing every t every debate we've seen thus far, it's kind of the same rhetoric over and over, you know, we're going to take care of the problems that are, and, and I think they've come to Nevada to really, you know, obviously we've become kind of that swing state that everybody thinks is a battleground, but I've yet to see anything of substance come out of any of the candidates. So I'm, I'm still kind of, I'm excited to see what's happening. Um, you know, uh, Joe Biden's doing some interesting things, Kamala Harris is doing some interesting things, but, you know, really there's not really that front runner for me, anybody in the Democratic Party. and. You know, I don't know if they're creating the stir in Nevada that they think they should be, so. Um, well, Matt, you know, the uh, the big thing to me has been uh, Medicare for all, which just, <coughs> t on the face of it, just sounds insane. It, sure, and I, I, I think that what we're seeing now is the kind of the clash within the party. Uh, the union side of that is, is going to be a big component. Uh, and, and ironically, they're not in favor of Medicare for all. They want to be able to keep their Cadillac health insurance plans. It, exactly. They, they like their coverage right now. And, they, you know, their, their bosses have negotiated great plans for them, and um, theoretically that could go away with single payer. So I think there's going to be a discussion internally on, on where the party needs to fall. But... If not, I think you see some of the union dollars and support start going to the right. One of the things that's uh, also interesting now is we're seeing um, some of the top tier candidates pulling away from the rest of the pack. And, and I was saddened to hear that Mike Gravel had pulled out from Alaska. Um, we were supposed to interview him uh, be 12 years ago now uh, when everybody came to Carson City for the big convocation there. 
And uh, I think he was 79 at that point. I think he's <laughs> <laughs> uh, in his early 90s right. now, but, but he's pulled out. So anybody who was planning to vote for him, uh, no need to worry about that. Um, but, uh, you know, it seems to me that the ground game in Nevada is going to be the most important. And the one that was right out of the gate and under the radar, but out of the gate, was Elizabeth Warren's campaign. Mm -hmm. And now uh, Kamala, Hammer, uh, Kamala Harris's uh, campaign is also saying that they're going to put a lot of people on the ground. Is that to you the secret uh, to breakthrough in Nevada? I, I don't think so. I, I think there's a, a saying, you know, uh, that fortune, fav fortune favors the bold. And I think people are just looking for something distinctive that they can latch on to. Um, you know, you may or may not be a fan of Donald Trump, but definitely when he came out, he made a statement that was different. And I think people want different. Um, well, again, whether that's good or bad, um, I think the ground get, I think having the talking points and something substantive, you mentioned earlier, everybody's kind of pandering to votes the same way. I think yeah, I'm, I would be interested to see if somebody really said, let's fix our immigration problem and this is what I think to fix it and and I think people would rally around it whether or not they believed it is at least something that's of a level of interest to people on something that's affecting headlines every day. One of the things that, that we've seen, as with every political campaign, the difference between campaigning and governing, is that you have a certain amount of pandering to <laughs> individual groups. And I praised Cory Booker on the show a couple of weeks ago for the fact that he said, you know, if I'm elected president, I want to be a president of all Americans, not just each of these individual groups. But you look at his numbers, and he's going nowhere at this point. Well, I, mean, I think the thing that you see, Sam, is that there is no true statesman there. They're all politicians. They're all saying exactly the same thing. There's a lot of cannibalization within the party, within the, 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 within the candidates, and nobody's coming out with any true substance. And I think the problem with that is if you're not seeing something that's really helping everybody, that's really going to address some serious issues, to Mike's point, I think you're not really making yourself stand out amongst the crowd. And so that's why we're really not seeing any front runners, we're not seeing anybody really stand out. And, and I know from running previous campaigns of my own, you've really got to go out and talk and have those conversations, but really follow through. And so far, in some of these records of the, some of these senators and these people that have already been in office, they don't have records that have proven that. All right, but now if you're talking statesman, I mean, I guess when you look at Bernie Sanders, you can't really say statesman because he has a certain political philosophy and that's what he's campaigned on forever. But if you look at Joe Biden, do you not consider Joe Biden you know, with length of service alone and vice presidential status for eight years as statesman? I think, I think Joe Biden has some, um, some, some semblance of a statesman. I think he's done a lot of things within his tenure and within politics that can prove that he's done things. Yeah, I think probably he's probably one of the front runners, in my opinion, for the Democratic candidates. But there are other ones, uh, you know, Butt Gig and, um, you know, Camilla and um, you look, Beto, those have not really, they don't have that historical historical um, presence that they can say, hey, look, what I've done, this is where I work. They're, just, they're really right now just pandering to the public. Um, one of the things that uh, needs to be said, uh, which is that it's incredibly difficult to unseat a sitting president. Sure. It, it, it absolutely is. And I think you see th the momentum is still with the president right now. And, and like Bob was saying, th in, until a, a true front runner emerges, they're not going to be able to, the, the Dem party is not going to be able to make up that difference, I don't think. And so they need to get together. And it's similar to the 2016 race for Republicans, right? It was, like you said, it's, it's uh, political cannibalism, always attacking each other. Um, and then when the pieces are all left, we have Donald Trump, or everything falls, we have Donald Trump as president. So I think, I think the Democrats need to take a serious look inward and uh, figure out the direction they want to go, whether that's the traditional Democrat value side of things or a more progressive stance, um, and, and which one's going to be the most viable to, to unseat President Trump. And let's go back to James Carville in the Clinton days. Mm -hmm. It's the economy, stupid, and the economy is so strong. Right. Um, and looking at what's happening with China, um, you know, uh, even though they're being accused of currency manipulation, they were actually manipulating the currency in the other direction, propping it up. It's right. now actually going to a level right. Right. where it really should be. So again, does this not, you know, when you look at it from the economy, doesn't it not look like Donald Trump is incredibly strong, despite all the other <laughs> press that, that <laughs> circulates? Right. Well, I, I call it the three-party system, right? So you have the Democrats, Republicans, and Trump, and so everyone are independent in their own right. Um, you know, I, to be able to unseat Trump, you're basically going to have to have a, a strong platform that people believe in that's basically on some kind of morality 
based thing, you know. So and that's and and that will resonate with people. And there's a couple candidates in the Democratic poll that I think could pull that one off, but they would have to change course and really kind of start hammering on these on these points about kind of the the presidentialness of themselves. Like Joe Biden can pull that one off, but he's going to have to unapologetically say, I'm parting from my prior voting record and what I'm saying, this is what I'm going to do to bring the country forward, not what I've done in the past, and, and own it, rather than just, again, kind of pandering and say, I'm just going to give everybody everything they want so they'll vote for me. That's not going to get, that, that'll maybe get them the nomination, but it's not going to get them a victory over in a sitting president. Then there's always the Trump factor, which is, when it gets down to the election, depending on what he's tweeting at the day, you know, it, it could just be a, a, a very uh, emotional-based vote just to say, I, I just want anybody that's not him. One of the things that we're seeing greatly in Nevada, but it's all across the country, is the growth of independence versus people being in the traditional parties. How do you think that this is going to play in the presidential election cycle? Uh, I think it's tremendous. I think both parties are extremely worried about the in independent vote because it's really difficult to say who, what those numbers are and, and why people are departing from the party. Um, and I think, you know, what we've seen over the last 10, 15 years is this kind of separation to the really this extremism on both sides. And most people, the most, uh, most of the common voters, the, the, the soft-spoken, non-vocal -vo voters are out there going, I really don't align fully with the, the right, all these extreme right values or I don't really align with all these extreme left values. And so I find myself kind of choosing somebody maybe more on an emotional uh, driven decision and and I think when you have that it makes a lot of uh, from my standpoint both parties very uh, scared and cynical about who, how do we go out and attract these voters but I think you know both parties have gotten some strategy about that ground game that you talked about getting out and really talking to people and exploring the the, the decisions that are, I mean the the issues that are out there but I also think that what's going to be important is that how they go about the ground game and making sure that they are connecting and connecting with millennials and truly getting those voters to get out and vote because we are losing uh, uh, the electorate because people are not really educated on the issues. They're just emotionally deciding on the issues, but they really don't know the issues. So I think if parties do a better job about really educating people about what's about how this is going to affect them in long term, that might help um, these uh, these future company uh, elections. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask a non-politician here, but somebody who works in the business as a lobbyist. Um, you know, are you going to see millennials voting in great numbers in this election cycle, or are they going to be as they are in so many other instances where this is not a priority for them? Until perhaps we get to the point of voting with your telephone. <laughs> <laughs> that's, in the, that's fair. You know, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. I mean, I, I think that um, that's a reality that when you make it accessible uh, to the way that people function on a daily basis, sure. you will be able to boost the number of people who actually vote. Oh, I, and, and I agree uh, completely with that. I, I, but I, I do think that um, the left is energized. I mean, they, they have plenty of incentive to, to go to the, you know, to the voting booth this time. Um, it, and that's, you know, he's sitting in the White House. Um, so I, I, think, I think you will see uh, a higher turnout from, from the younger folks. Um, but, but I think like what you were saying too, I th that purple area is much larger than you would think by looking at social media or anything in the media in general. I mean, I think we all kind of live in an echo chamber at this point. And um, I, I think the, the moderates still rule. I have a piece of advice for people who are listening or watching this program at this point in time, which is when any kind of crisis occurs, um, watch the news that day and then watch something else for the next several days because then you will not get that echo chamber right. where it appears that you are just being so overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the information that you're receiving. Um, we've seen this obviously with the gun violence that occurred, which is terrible, not, not to, to diminish mm -hmm. that at all. But if what happened on, uh, in October in Las Vegas um, didn't change things, I'm not sure how anything more is going to change things, certainly not in the short term. But let's take a break. We'll come back more with our pundits after this. Tamarack Junction is South Reno's hotspot with over 450 of the latest slots and video games. Sully Sports Bar, the Dining Car Restaurant, William Hill Sportsbook, and the Tamarack Steakhouse and Lounge. We're just north of the Summit Mall in South Virginia. Yeah. 
Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. Hi, I'm Eric Robnett, owner of Home Energy Experts. Has this ever happened to you? Honey, did you remember to turn down the thermostat? <sighs> Forgetting to set the temperature? Not fun. We can help. Our new smart thermostat keeps the temperature set for your comfort all by itself. I'm feeling hot now. <sighs> to increase your comfort, go to homeenergyexperts.com for details. That's homeenergyexperts.com. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. The Tamarack Junction Steakhouse is known for signature steaks, handcrafted cocktails, and world-class wines. Join us Thursdays and Friday nights from 4.30 to 6.30 in the Steakhouse Lounge for live music, gourmet plates, and well-priced wines just north of the Summit Mall on South Virginia. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we have an all-pundit show going here with Mike Bosma, Matt Robinson, and Bob Lucy. So in the break, we were kind of talking a little bit here. Um, to me... Um, what I'm looking for from candidates is not doom and gloom when our country is in such good shape right. on an economic basis. What I'm looking for is tell me you know, what positive things you're looking for for our country to achieve because we're not going to heck in a handbasket. Um, is, is that a winning strategy? Well, and I, from my standpoint, it is, you know, and, and that's what I would like to run, how I like to run my campaigns is how do we go forward? We know that where we are today and looking back doesn't ever really help us. We can use it as history. We can use it as points of reference, but going forward, and I think that's really what the, uh, any candidate going forward, f especially in the presidential election, has to look forward. How do we move forward? And I mean, as we talked earlier about, uh, you know, uh, Joe Biden, I think he really has that opportunity to do that because he has that sound understanding. He could, but as long as he, but he, to Mike's point, he's got to change his rhetoric. He's got to start working on what is working today, where are we at, and going forward, you know, instead of going, he did this, he did that, she did this, she did that, and that's really what we're seeing, and it's not working. You know, another thing that I found interesting in the last week or so is the attacks on uh, former President Obama. Um, whether you agree with his policies or not, he left office an extremely popular mm -hmm. guy. And there is a certain mm -hmm. percentage of the public that would look at the president today and the president then and say, eh, you know, we'd much rather have a president like Obama um, than somebody who is, you know, tweeting all the time like this. Um, sure. There are others, obviously, that would disagree. Sure. Uh, but, but for Democrats to be attacking the Obama administration <laughs> over eight years seems kind of crazy to me. It, you know, it does. And it's, it's, I think, pretty transparent that it's, it's just to try to neutralize Biden. Um, I think at the end of the day, they still idolize Obama. And I think, going on to on your question for Bob, I, I think it depends on the messenger for that positive uh, message. I don't think everyone is, is the, the vessel. And, and Obama was incredibly successful with that. Um, had the charisma, had the, the young energy. Um, and I don't think, I, I think it's very easy to come off as disingenuous on the campaign trail. And he was, he was masterful at not doing that. Yeah, and it's, uh, I, I do think, though, that if we could have somebody that could take some of the more substantive issues, I mentioned immigration in the last segment, um, you know, or gun violence, right, and just do something that's a moderate approach, like, no, we're just going to deal with it, but we're not going to train wreck it, right? We're, you know, I think, and really focus on being very likable <laughs> you know, as a campaign strategy. I think that that's like the winning formula. Like, hey, we're going to fix the things that are broken. We're not going to you know, change the things that are working for us. And I think that's how people, to Bob's point, they can see a way forward. And, oh, by the way, I like you. And I think th that there's not anything see, you know, magical about that. It seems pretty obvious. But, you know, instead of just all the infighting and all, you know, the, 
the normal rhetoric. And, and I agree. I agree with what Mike's saying. I think I think that was one of Trump's successful ways of, uh, of his campaign is that he made himself look and feel like a regular a regular citizen. He talked like a regular citizen when he campaigned, when he was out amongst the, on his, uh, his campaign stops, he made himself relatable to the people he was talking to. You know, and I think in a different way, he didn't look and feel like a politician. He looked, even though he was a billionaire, he came off as a regular Joe American citizen that cared about America. And I think that's what really kind of changed the narrative for him and everybody's feeling going, all right, I can get behind this guy because he does, he believes in my ide ideologies and who I am as a person. So I think that was a right. big deal. All right, let's take a break. More with these guys. We're gonna hit that immigration topic when we come back. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I'm men's rights attorney, Marilyn York. And because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at Remax Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at Remax Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue on with our All Pundits show with Bob Lucy, Vice Chair of the Washoe County Commission, Matt Robinson with Argentum Partners, and Mike Bosma, Principal with Clifton Larson Allen CPAs. So Mike, um, I wanted to get to immigration. You've had some recent discussions about this. Um, I, it's an incredibly, incredibly complex topic. Um, with two huge sides to it, but many other sides. Um, the last time we had major immigration reform, it started in 1977 with Jimmy Carter and ended up in 1986 with Ronald Reagan. That is a long time to get something done. And all attempts since then have blown up. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I posted this thing on Facebook just to see what would happen. And I just said, what if we just did a NAFTA-like work visa or you know so that you can if you're Canada or Mexico or US you can just freely travel and work in any three countries just like you could do that as in business why just make it so that you can do it individually and that way you but every six months or so you've got to go back home at least for a minute and and as you'll be allowed back in as long as you didn't do any bad things when you're in the country you know so that way they can just scan you and kind of keep everybody legit by and large you know some of the very hardworking people that I know of that uh, come here from Mexico uh, to work. We need them. We you know near zero unemployment. Uh, we need uh, those types of laborers, and I think there's also a need for more technical uh, professionals in Mexico specifically. And if we let's just open up the borders, and and just honor that people are going back and forth and working and making a living, and and we want to keep the bad people out. I, I you know as I've vetted that with some people, they're like, no, that just makes sense. Because that's what's happening already. We're not changing it. We're just making it legal. And then right. we attract people. Well, and, and we have, all, and it, you know, when you get down to the reality of what goes along the border, for example, in El Paso, mm -hmm. um, 
there are people traveling across the border every day, mm -hmm. shopping oh, yeah. in both countries, and medical in both countries, business in both countries, uh, tourism in both countries, visiting families in both countries. Um, they would like to see something um, that's even better than what they currently have now. In San Diego, I was down there visiting a couple of years ago, and their economic department recognizes Tijuana as part of the San Diego metro right. area. Oh, yeah. I right. mean, it's crazy that we, we have this system, but you have business on one side that wants to get low-cost labor. You have unions on the other side that don't want to have low-cost labor because it messes with their uh, union programs. And so neither side is winning. No, I, I, neither side is winning, but I think Mike's absolutely right. I mean, especially here in the state of Nevada, I mean, so much of our tourism industry is based around uh, so many labor, um, uh, tr you know, uh, immigrant laborers that are here that help. Mm -hmm. We have our cook line staffs, so we have uh, housekeeping staffs, so we have a number of people, people and people that have uh, excelled and within the, within our country. And if we just approach it from a different standpoint of, hey, let's work together to find a, a viable solution. But the problem is, is that we constantly run into that criminal element. And I think that's where the parties really find themselves stuck is that we want the, we want the good, how do you sort the good from the bad? Well, it's pretty easy actually. I mean, if you put this into context, I mean, the percentage of people who are the troublemakers versus the percentage mm -hmm. of people either who are, are, who are here out of status, the 12 to 16 million people um, versus the criminal element, it's a tiny fraction. It is. And, and, and by the way, you got about 30 seconds. Okay, right? I, I, I'm, I'm going to be careful with this. There are a lot of people that are much smarter than me that haven't found a solution. Um, so I don't pretend to, <laughs> to have one. But I, I, I think that at the end of the day, I think the Democrats need to engage President Trump on this. I think he's willing to deal and mm -hmm. he's willing to come to the table. He said it right. before. He said, it. Right. said, you know, I will give and uh, give in on some of this. We can find a place for, for DACA recipients. We can, uh, you know, extend TPS. Um, and then try to find a final solution for how we, we handle immigration moving forward. And that's where we have to leave it. Gentlemen, great discussion. Thank you all very much, and Thank we'll you. be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. St. Ives Florist, for every holiday and every special occasion. For romance, custom home design. We have the largest selection of fresh flowers in northern Nevada, and we also offer a large selection of unique gift items. Come see me, Lori Ann, at St. Ives Florist, 700 South Wells Avenue, or call me at 333-9190. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Subscribe to our Nevada Newsmakers channel. We'll see you on the next broadcast.